ಭದ್ರಂಕರ್ಣೆ ಶೃಣುಯಾಮ ಭದ್ರಂ ಪಶ್ಯೇ ಮಾಕ್ಷಭರ್ಯಜತ್ರ ಸ್ಥಿರೈರಂಗೈಸ್ತುಷ್ಟುವಾಗುಂಸ್ತನೂಬಿ ವ್ಯಶೇಮ ದೇವಿ ತೈಯದಾಯು ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಇಂದ್ರೋ ವೃದ್ಧಶ್ರವಾಹ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಪೂಷಾ ವಿಶ್ವೇದ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನಸ್ತಾರ್ಕ್ಷೋ ಅರಿಷ್ಠನೇಮಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿರ್ದಾತು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ವಿವ್ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ದ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ the vision of vedanta for today's lecture it's a very broad topic and it is to gain the vision of vedanta the entire adhyayanam entire shravanam of the prasthana traya upanishad bhagavad gita and brahma sutras are undertaken however we can approach the vision of vedanta in today's lecture in a particular context with a particular framework sureshwara acharya ji was one of the disciples of adi shankara acharya has written a very beautiful analytical work which is called naishkarmya siddhi in the naishkarmya siddhi he gives a very very nice example sureshwara acharya ji gives this example a boy is sleeping and the mother comes to wake him up she tries to wake him up once mother says oh son wake up and he is still asleep he doesn't wake up second time she comes and says o oh son it's time for the school wake up and he doesn't wake up third time she again comes to wake him up and she says o oh son wake up and then suddenly the son wakes up what happened here it's the same mother is the same words o son wake up but third time the son woke up through this example sureshwara acharya uh, tells us that words have, have power to wake us up words have power to wake us up everyone is in the deep sleep of ignorance and we take undertake the study the vichara through the shastras and the words of the shruti have the power to wake us up to wake us up to our real nature which is sachidananda purna atma that's why satsangs classes shravanam of the shastra repeatedly with attention is required so that one day one day we wake up <laughs> it could be the third day it could be the third year it could be any time but if we are alert if we sit with attention and approach the shruti the shastras for uh, atma vichara definitely we have the possibility to wake up to our true nature but sometimes often lectures can put also to <laughs> put you to a good sleep also <laughs> once there was a student who was very very committed to attending everyday lectures so every day she used to go in the evening and attend the vedanta classes and one day some guests have come home guest has come home and now she doesn't know what to do 
I want to go to the Vedanta class, but at the same time, I have a guest at home to attend. So what do I do? So she thought of it in this way. She said, why don't you join me to a Bhagavad Gita class that I go every evening? So then the guest said, okay, fine, I will try, I will come with you. So she took the guest also to Swami Paramarthanandaji's lecture in Chennai. And then the lecture happened, and then this guest uh, goes to Swamiji and does a namaskar, and she says, Swamiji, there is something in you. You have some power. Swamiji said, no, nothing like that. <laughs> I am committed to teaching the vision of Vedanta. But she said, Swamiji, I am suffering from insomnia. I take tablets and medications. But you are in your lecture today, I went to such deep sleep. You are truly amazing. <laughs> yeah, Vedanta has to be pursued with interest, with commitment, with choice. Not like simply I'll go attend something, something is happening, just like we go attend kacheris after kacheris, music concerts. So it is not something that you come and uh, attend, there's a choice, which is the purushartha. So you make a choice to gain insights, deeper insights into your own life. That is Vedanta, that is Atma Vichara. So what is the vision of Vedanta? The vision of Vedanta is that you are Purnaha. You are not just the body-mind-sense complex you are identified with. There is a deeper aspect to your existence. And what is that? Shastra says, Brahma, you are Purna Atma. You are Purnam, your true nature is Purnatva. That is the vision of the Vedanta. Very different from the vision of the Vyavaharika world. The Vyavaharika world also has a vision for us. So what is that vision that is there in the world? Which is the, that is there in the world? That you are Apurnaha. You are incomplete. Anything you engage with it is telling you, you are incomplete. You are not good enough. You are not good enough. What you have is not good enough. You are incomplete. The way you look is not acceptable. You are incomplete. So use our beauty comp products, so you will feel complete. <laughs> the home you have is not good enough. So come to this new neighborhood. So that's when your life will be complete. The job that you have is not good enough. Try this. What you have, what you are, itself is not good enough. You got to constantly keep on adding something or the other to your life to feel complete. So the vision of the world is that you are incomplete. You are incomplete. But the, way, the vision of the Vedanta here the Shruti alone is telling that you are complete. As you are, you are complete. In fact, billions of dollars are spent in marketing to make you feel incomplete. <laughs> suppose, just a hypothetically, you can imagine, suppose the entire world decided tomorrow that we are fine as we are as we look, then the entire billion or trillion dollar beauty industry will collapse. <laughs> it is going on, going on, on and on, is because you feel that you are incomplete. And they are very, very experts in making you feel incomplete. So any aspect of the world you approach, you touch, it only says you are incomplete. You go ask your spouse, yes. <laughs> spouse will say, yes, you are not good enough, you are incomplete. <laughs> you go ask your boss, you are not good enough, you are incomplete. So, 
this is how the world is structured. But then, with the sa same sense of incompleteness, we approach few religious aspects of our life, then also sometimes we feel incomplete. <laughs> a person takes to a very pious religious life, it's nice initially, but then the person starts comparing himself or herself with other devotees. Oh, that person is doing uh, 108 malas, 10 rounds. I am doing only one. <laughs> I'm not good enough. That person uh, does these many pujas. I don't do that much. I'm not good enough. That person puts so much flowers. I don't do uh, uh, that many. I'm incomplete. My God. Alas, there was a beautiful occasion to grow in prayers, but this person starts applying the same worldly logic even in this uh, aspect and loses the game. Here also, instead of growing in prayers, this person now starts comparing himself and feels incomplete. And some people, they come to Vedanta also, <laughs> And then again they start comparing. Oh, that person knows so much Sanskrit. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not good enough. Oh, that person knows these many uh, shlokas. That person is able to chant. I'm unable to chant. I'm incomplete. Alas, we lose the game. In fact, in the entire Jagat, Shruti, Bhagavad Gita, are the only texts which are saying you are complete, you are whole. As you are, you are Purnaha. As you are, you are Purnaha. But if a person looks at himself or herself, that's not the way the person seems to feel. That doesn't seem to be the experience of the person. That person experientially feels incomplete. And what is this dichotomy? Here, on one side, the Shruti, the Bhagavad Gita Upanishads are saying, your true nature is completeness itself. And here, my experience as I am today is that I seem to feel I'm incomplete. In order to erase this gap, this dichotomy, what we need is Atma Vichara. What we need is Atma Vichara. So in order to fully absorb and make the vision of the Shruti our own, what we need is Vichara. Enquiry. And enquiry into what? Enquiry into oneself. Adhyatma Vichara. Adhyatma Vichara is very unique. It's unlike any other Vichara. So we have so much, so much vichara going on. So entire vichara can be categorized into, into three categories. One is adibhautika vichara. So the inquiry with reference to different aspects of the world. So you want to understand the world, you want to understand the mechanism of the world, you want to understand things of the world, all of it adibhautika vichara. Yes, that is also required. But that is one realm, that is one category. Then you have another category of vichara, adidaivika vichara. With reference to devatas, vichara inquiry with reference to rituals, with reference to prayers, with reference to homas, all of it adidaivika vichara. So we have covered the entire world through Adi Bhautika Vichara. We have covered all the aspects of the Dharma with reference to Adi Daivika Vichara. But then, the Vedanta Vichara is not really these two, the entire focus is on Adhyatma Vichara. That's why it is called as Adhyatma Vidya, Adhyatma Vichara. And what is this entire inquiry about? Is about oneself. And then Kuvichara is enquiry. What is Adhyatma? Concerning myself or concerning oneself.
a vichara concerning oneself. So this vichara is what bridges, the erases the gap of my own individual experience as of now. B before vichara, I seem to feel a purnaha. And then after this self-inquiry, vichara, what I come to recognize is my own true nature, which is purnatvam. Purnatvam. How much ever you do adibhautika vichara, how much ever you do the adidaivika vichara, you'll only be left feeling incomplete. That's why the purushartha of moksha is so important to choose and undertake self-inquiry so that we imbibe the vision of the shastra through shravana, manana and nididhyasana. And how is it that I conclude that I am apurnaha. Shankaracharya in the Adhyasa Bhashya indicates that is this is avicharena siddhaha. This conclusion has come upon without really doing any vichara. Without doing any vichara, we kept on accepting the labels that were put upon us. You are born a birthday is assigned. You are born, a birth nakshatram is assigned. You are born, a gotram is assigned. You are born, a, a, a kulam is assigned. A community is assigned for you. A nationality is assigned. Then height is assigned. Skin color is assigned. Then the kid goes on uh, collecting some qualification. So that is assigned. Now, a few more relationships start. So that label of father, mother, husband, wife, friend, teacher, professional, employer, all of those labels, we go on accepting and accepting and accepting. Alas, we have never done vichara before accepting any of these labels. We just keep on accepting the labels that the world gives us. We have never put any, we never seem to have thought about any labels. So we just go on putting one after the other, one after the other. And because of avichara, I also have this new disease called ahankara and mamakara. <laughs> so what is that disease of ego? Identifying oneself with the body, total identification. Identifying oneself with the mind, the emotions, the feelings, total identification. And not only that, there is another very unique thing happens that my identification is not just limited to this uh, body-mind sense complex. I seem to get identified with many external things also. <laughs> so in one way, we may say, okay, Body happens to be there and you have some identification. Okay, fine. Okay, ahankara, fine. But this mamakara is a very unique disorder and disease. <laughs> so what is mamakara? You identify with external things. A car which was just sitting there in the dealership and then you pay some money, you sign some papers, now, you start identifying with the car. That car which was sitting there, you had no relationship with it, you were just there. But now, once you have signed, now you have this unique identification and attachment with the car. And especially in India, car is a big thing. <laughs> it's a big thing, you see. So when you go pay money in the dealership, and then when you're about to take, receive the delivery of the car, it's a big event. So they cut the cake. <laughs> there are balloons. Then recently in Bangalore, one of our devotees have a, a dealership. So he was taking me there and I saw a priest there. 
So then uh, uh, I asked, what is a priest here? Swamiji, now we have employed a full-time priest for car puja in the dealership. It's a very big thing. <laughs> so it's very, very nice, unique service. I liked it. <laughs> so the priest is also ready-made available. So there is a car puja done. And then the cake is cut. Then the key is received. And now the new family sits in the car. Everybody is very, very happy. Now they start the car. They come to the main streets of Bangalore, Hyderabad, Delhi. Then there is a car next coming, which doesn't follow any lane discipline. <laughs> and that car comes and touches your new, brand new car and puts a scratch. Ah, now it's as if there is a scratch on my heart. <laughs> Are, how is it that? What is happening? A non-living thing, a car, which was just few hours before it was sitting in the dealership, whatever happened to that, you had no connection with it. Now, now you have started identifying with it. And whatever happens to the car, it's as if happening to you, whatever is happening to you. And it's a very unique thing. And if we identify with few people, few things, and then my whole world is just that. It's just that. And whatever is happening to that is my total identification. And then my world view is so limited is with reference to only these few people that I'm identified with and a few things that I'm identified with. In fact, even uh, Hardcore worldly person's worldview is so very limited because that person's identification is so limited. He or she identifies with a few people, a profession, and a few things. That's all is the world for that person. The world is not at all vast. That person's world doesn't include sun, moon, stars, trees, wind, nothing it includes. That person's world is so tiny and the person's conclusion about the world is so limited, it's all based on these identifications. That's all, that alone. Shastra has the, in its vision, the Vedanta has in its vision, what is that vision? Sarvatma Bhava. To be connected with the entire world. To end with the entire world. To see the entire world as you. That's the vision of the Vedanta. But if I'm full of ahankara and mamakara, I do not have any, any experience of that because my identification is so limited. So that person who has such a limited view of the world will always be complaining, will always be bitter, will be filled with fear, will be filled with anxiety, will be filled with bitterness. Because that's all the worldview. That person always comes up with these kind of satsang questions. Swamiji, I am, uh, we are good people, we have not done anything, but why is it that Bad people always seem to get everything in the world and I don't seem to get anything worthwhile, <laughs> that is worthy. Good seems to happen only to bad, uh, uh, bad people and bad, seems, bad things seems to happen to good people. This is a very simplistic conclusion. Where is it stemming from? This kind of a conclusion is stemming from our very, very limited worldview. And that worldview is based on only ahankara and mamakara. Only ahankara and mamakara. In fact, it's also coming from a very simplistic expectation from life that life has to be just one straight line. There should be no ups and downs. And all the time, only good things, pleasant things, whatever I want, that has to happen in my life. That's all has to happen. Now, Pooja Swamiji, uh, 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 once when he was in Salisburg, one of his students, she was dri driving down the highway 
and it was a very uh, 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 bad weather day and then she was dri uh, driving and she had a flat tire in the middle of nowhere and then she thought oh my god what is going to happen now i don't even have all the right equipments in the car to change the uh, flat tire what is going to happen how long the fuel is going to last to keep me warm i don't know what my day is going to be then she waited for some time some good person uh, who was driving down the same highway stopped and helped uh, her to change the tire then she drove down to gurukulam and she told swami ji swami ji today ishwara and you your blessings really saved me it's because of uh, because of uh, uh, that i got this help and i could come to gurukulam it's ishwara ishwara only sent that help to change my flat tire puja swami ji looked at her and asked hey who gave you the flat tire in the first place <laughs> who gave you the flat tire in the first place so the same higher power bhagwan ishwara whose grace helped you to fix your problem is also <laughs> the same in the order the big tall order of karma you got the flat tire too but if we do not have a big world view if we have very limited world view we feel that all that i want in my life that alone has to happen and nothing else should happen nothing else that i don't desire should happen but unfortunately life doesn't work in this way life is what it is it's filled with raga and dvesha it is filled with so called good and bad it is filled with highs and lows that's how life is so life as it is can be appreciated only by a person who has a bigger world view the vision of vedanta helps us expand our world view from a very limited world view based on ahankara and mamakara i and mine that's all i and mine so very very small small world vedanta helps you to come out of the shackles of ahankara and mamakara and recognize one's own true nature as atma chaitanya as atma tatva thus breaking the shackles of ahankara and mamakara in fact we got to first understand ahankara and mamakara are shackles are the shackles you know in the history of the world it was it's very unfortunate that many of the slaves did not know that they were bound across the world across the continent continents so many slaves very nice good people but then they un unfortunately because of the conditioning because of the conditioning they did not know that they were bound you know so many times elephant this great large majestic animals of the forest are there tied up by a small chain by small shackles to a peg if that elephant wants just by one stroke one kick it can uproot that entire small shackle it's not even 4 uh, feet the shackles is so tiny but then why is it that this majestic animal is tied to a post standing there doing some gimmicks why is it that because from that uh, childhood of that elephant it was trained that if you are tied to this post to put to this pole you cannot move you cannot move it never knows its own strength it never knows because it was conditioned so deeply similarly we are so deeply conditioned by the world and all its agendas and all the agendas of the big billion dollar uh, corporates where they don't want to <laughs> want uh, you to feel good about yourself to feel free 
to accept yourself as you are. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. So sometimes in the cults also, the gurus never want you to understand, <laughs> totally be free, because, uh, because you lose the followers. <laughs> a patient cured is a customer lost. <laughs> a, a, a sadhaka enlightened <laughs> is a shishya lost. No, we are Vedanta Parampara. We are belonging, we belong to the grand traditional parampara of Advaita Vedanta. We are here in Arshavidya Gurukulam and elsewhere in all our institutions. We are committed, our commitment is only to free the students from the shackles of Ajnana, from the shackles of Ahankara and Mamakara. In fact, Shruti Veda is the only scripture where it finally gives you everything, every possible tool, every possible guidance. This pramana alone gives you all the possibilities to free you and takes a back step. The Shruti Mata, if you, can, if you have a poetic imagination, you can really feel it. Shruti Mata gives you all the tools, all the pointers, everything, and finally, it, she stands at a distance and smiles at you. You are free. Yatra Veda Aveda Bhavanti. Once you have imbibed this knowledge, once you have totally absorbed this vision, you are free. And then Veda says, my work is done. My job is done then what do you have? What is the relationship with you and the Shastra after that point? That, that relationship is one of gratitude. That gratitude, what, what is your attitude towards the Shastra is that of gratitude. This great, great uh, uh, set of uh, knowledge books, vision of the Rishis has freed you. That's our attitude towards the Shruti. So the vision of the Veda, the vision of the Shastra is very, very grand and stark opposite to the world, to the world and very opposite to the vision of the Karma Kanda also. Because the assumption in the Karma Kanda, the first portion of the Veda is also that you are a Karta Bhokta and you lack a few things and you constantly have to add a few things into your life to feel complete. But the vision of the Veda is totally different. It wants to point out every time that you are Purnaha. You are Purnaha. So in order to realize this vision, in order to fully appreciate this vision, Vedas, the uh, Vedanta uses many prakriyas, many texts for us to help imbibe this vision and gives so many pointers. Shankaracharya says one of the primary pointer that he gives in a very beautiful introductory prakarana text in Sadhana Panchakam, he says, Atmecha vyavasiyatam. Atmecha vyavasiyatam. We have Icha for everything else except for Atma. We seem to have time for everything else except for Atma Vichara. So first and foremost thing that we have to do is change our orientation. From an extroverted mind, you got to make it inward. You got to look into yourself. So Atma Icha Vyavasiyata. So we have Icha for everything. So in fact, today in this social uh, media era, what is our Icha? What is an average person's Icha? To constantly get to know more and more information about other people's life. <laughs> what is the entire Instagram about? How others look? <laughs> what is the entire Facebook about? What other people are doing? 
So what is the engagement of an average person? In the entire day, that person has two worlds to handle now. One is the Vyavaharika world. <laughs> Another Pratibhasika world of the world of Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. <laughs> so all the time that person is looking at what other people are doing, what other people are doing, what other people are doing. So in back, uh, you know, back in the olden days in India, people used to sit on the uh, courtyard outside their homes in the agraharams and everything, and they used to chit chat and gossip about everybody and everything. So people look down upon those people. What, what does that person do? Has a big lunch and comes out and sits in the courtyard and talks about every other family, every other person. Who ran away with whom? <laughs> Who got a divorce? <laughs> so that's what they keep on discussing on the uh, outside platforms or wherever those, uh, such people meet. Who wore what? Who has what? Who looks what? That's what those people seem to be discussing. But what is an average, this so-called modern, educated, very, uh, very high-thinking person, what does that person do on the lighted smartphone screens? That person is scrolling through Instagram account after Instagram account, the TikTok accounts after TikTok account, videos after videos. What is that person doing? That person is only interested in knowing what others are doing, what others are wearing, what hairstyle that person has, what holiday that person uh, undertook. This is what the person's engagement, that this so-called very highly educated uh, modern person is no different from that person who is gossiping on the streets of the Agraharam or on the outer courtyards. So no difference at all. So we got to move up, we got to move up. From worldly vichara all the time, we got to come to Atma vichara. We got to come to Atma vichara. There's a very nice simple uh, proverb in English. It says, great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Low minds discuss people. <laughs> so one got to introspect oneself and see where one stands. So what is your whole conversation about with reference? Uh, what is your converse conversation centered upon? All the time, are you talking about discussing big ideas and other things? What can we do? What is the vision of the Gita? So how can I improve my life? How can I handle my uh, emotional reactions? How can I come to uh, understand this aspect of Shastra? Then that person belongs to this high category. So the average people are only discussing events. Oh, that happened there. This is coming. Uh, cherry blossoms are coming. Flea market is going to start outside. That uh, farmer's market has come. This has come. That has come. They are all the time talking about events. And they're very, very low category of people. They're all the time talking about others. All the time. Their entire agenda their entire life is so low that they are only engaged in pulling the other person down. Just to throw some comments on other person. Just to defame a person. All the, their entire life is centered around gossiping, talking about other people to pull down good people. Such are very, very low minds. So person, in, uh, person interested in Atma Vichara must rise up to from discussing people, you got to rise up to discussing events and finally from there you move up to totally involved in discussing the self in Atma Vichara. You are so far, you have shut the doors for the world and you are interested only in imbibing the vision of the Shruti. That is the commitment that we need. That is what Acharya Shankara means, Atmecha Vyavasiyatam. That means what? Your Icha for the world, may you reduce. May you give up. So if you want to, uh, if you don't want to have the Vyavasayatmika Buddhi and you want to cultivate Atma Vichara, then you shut your doors to the world. 
Two things cannot happen at the same time. In fact, what we try to do, and that's why so much of our efforts go wasted, is because if there is a shirt or a garment on, we try to put on a new garment. <laughs> what is the use if you have not shed the old? What is the point of trying to put on a new garment? It will be a ridiculous thing to do. So you have the sweaty, uh, stinky shirt on, and then without removing it, you are putting a fresh, new, fragrant shirt. What happens to that fresh, new, fragrant shirt? You try to put it on, the odor and the stinkiness of the old shirt only gets mixed with this fresh, new, fragrant shirt. <laughs> So what happens in so many times if we don't pay attention to the fundamentals of Vedanta, sadhana chatushtaya sampatti. In fact, the moment we start talking about Viveka, Vairagya and all, everybody will, oh, we know this. Okay, why this Swami is again saying all this? We know it, we know it. We have heard so many times. So what is there to talk about Viveka, Vairagya, Shama, Dhamma, Uparama, Titiksha? My God, they are the bread and butter of Vedanta. So Swami Sadatmanandaji, one of my teachers who is Acharya of uh, uh, Arshavidya Gurukulam, Coimbatore, Swamiji says, if you get entire Vairagya in full measure, Swamiji says that itself is mini moksha. <laughs> you have mini moksha here and there if you can have the qualification of Vairagya, Viveka and Vairagya, that, that there alone is moksha, mini moksha, he says. But we pay least attention to this. So Acharya Shankara says, Atmecha Vyavasiyatam. And one of the other pointers Acharya Shankara gives us in order to fully imbibe the vision of Vedanta, in, it, in whose vision you are Purnaha, how to totally appreciate that vision. Before that, he asks us to do. One more exercise. Acharya says, Bhavasuke doshonu sandhiyatam. Bhavasuke doshonu sandhiyatam. This is what brings us Viveka and Vairagya. So, Bhavasukha. There is so much Sukha in the outer world. What is Sukha? I would translate here as pleasure. Sukha not as Ananda. We will keep it as two words. Sukha versus Ananda. So Sukha, here is what? Bhava Sukha is pleasures of the world. Bhava Sukhe doshonu sandhiyatam. May you be very alert. If you want to appreciate the vision of the Vedanta, be alert. Bhava Sukhe doshonu sandhiyatam. The pleasures of the world, no doubt, gives us an high but it leaves you dry. <laughs> it gives you experience, pleasure experiences after pleasure experiences. Dopamine high, dopamine high, dopamine high. But then, one day, you become numb. With so much dopamine in your system, all the time pleasure, 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 coming out not only from one indriya, from one sense organ, today, we are in a situation where all our sense organs are constantly, uh, uh, constantly engaged with pleasures where we are co having constant this rise in dopamine. And that's what world wants you to be it, like a zombie. So you see, the, so many people, they're either talking or eating and tasting something. <laughs> all the time, some sensation, some pleasure on the tongue. All the time, they want to sit on the comfortable chairs, soft, because they want that sense of touch with the skin, largest sense organ, in fact, largest sense organ, the skin. All the time, it has to feel good. So that's why we add softeners to our <laughs> uh, cycle in after, uh, after the during the rinse cycle. Why? Because the clothes have to feel good. Uh, uh, on the skin all the time. Not only that, I want the pleasure sensation from Nasika, uh, Indriya, from the nose, so I want it to be not only soft, I want it to be fragrant also. 
So we add some fragrance also to the rinse cycle because I want my sense organ to be engaged in pleasure all the time. And then what to talk about the Karna Indriya. All the time, some music should be going on. That's why you uh, uh, walk around the streets of Hyderabad, Bangalore, Delhi, New York. I only come, keep seeing people with AirPods <laughs> inside. So there is always uh, some music or a podcast, something going on with uh, something going on. Basically, a pleasure sensation for the ear. And then for the eyes, always the lighted screen some entertainment must be going on all the time when we are engaged like this in uh, with the world we will have no sense of reality no sense of even vyavaharika reality because you are always there in a prathibhasika paramarthika is very <laughs> very distant when you are not even in vyavaharika what to talk about paramarthika reality so always you are in one prathibhasika world so much problems with reference to mind. Psychological problems are uh, um, increasing and increasing in the society is because we are so badly engaged with, uh, uh, with, uh, with all these lighted screens and sense pleasures and sensations all the time, which is really interfering with the basic human psychology. And finally, it makes it numb. So after a point, Life is monotonous. You don't feel anything. You work to, uh, to buy a beautiful home. Now you, it, uh, it, it has, uh, alas, failed to inspire you. <laughs> Why? Because you are numb. So you have all the clothes that you ever wanted, but you have no reaction towards it. It's not a neutral, re if it is neutrality, equanimity, very well, it's Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> That's not what an average person has. That person is numb. Numb. Coldplay or something had a song called Numb. I should listen to it again. <laughs> numb. So, it's numb. Anything in the world. Family. Alas, fails to inspire you. Numb. So the money that you ever wanted, you seem to have in some measure, whatever you wanted, at least whatever you wanted when you came into this country. Numb. So anything with reference to world, it only has makes, uh, makes you feel numb. And what to talk about the sun, moon, the Panchamahabhutas, which are all around, you have no relation, you walk in the morning streets as if you have no relationship with it. You are numb. So everything has become numb. So the so-called Sukha, Bhava Sukha, which should have otherwise made you feel good about yourself, has made you numb. So Acharya Shankara says, Bhava Sukhe Doshonu Sandhiyatam. Do vichara of every Sukha that you engage with. Is it just making you feel good at that particular point of time? Well, okay, fine. Let us accept hypothetically there. But... Alas, it has made me numb. So, bhava suke doshonu sandhiyata. We got to see the fault which is there in bhava suka. What is that fault? Though it may give me some sense of pleasure, finally it will make me feel numb. Numb with reference to life. It's a very, very sad state to be. With, with Vedanta or without Vedanta, it's a very sad state to be. So, Atmecha Vyavasiyatam, and that is one pointer, and another pointer Acharya gives is Bhavasuke Doshonu Sandhiyatam. By doing that, we come to, uh, come to the main lane where we have to travel, that is the Atma Vichara. The Vichara is possible only when you keep certain things, the foundation is strong. For that, you got to put these things in place. Then alone, a person can undertake the inquiry through Shravana, Manana, Nididhyasana. And that's where Shravana works. Otherwise, 
too much overdose of shravana also will make you numb, will never help you uh, uh, absorb the vision of Vedanta. Because too much shravanam now, too much all the time listening. Great acharyas are coming to your living rooms, kitchen, counters, and during your morning walks and driving, they are all speaking and you are driving and sweeping and cleaning. A big, big acharyas are coming and talking and addressing, addressing to you. You know, Pooja Swamiji was very much aware of it. In once in 2014, Pooja Swamiji told, I know all of you are listening to me on the YouTube, <laughs> cooking, cleaning, walking. I have a request for you, Swamiji said. Do not pull the Swami into the bathroom. <laughs> so overdose of anything will make you numb, including Shravanam. Why? Why do you say so, Swamiji? Paunav Punnena Shravanam Kuryat. Yes, may you do repeated Shravanam. Repeatedly listen, that's what will wake us up one day. But if you pay attention to Brahadaranya Kishruti, where the Shruti says, Atma Vare Drashtavyo Shrotavyo Mantavyo Nididhyasitavyaha. It, it gives you this, the Sutra. How, how should you conduct the self-enquiry? How should you go about the Atma Vichara? Through Shravana, Manana, Nididhyasana. All three disciplines are important. But when I keep looking at students of Vedanta, they are definitely do, do, doing a great job with reference to Shravanam, but very less focus on Manana and Nididhyasanam. So, uh, nobody sits, nobody has time or the mental framework to sit and contemplate, nor just do manana to reflect upon what we have heard. What we have heard. We have heard so many texts. Just like the cow, after eating the grass, sits and keeps chewing on the grass, it takes back the grass from its pouch and then keeps on chewing it again and absorbing all the rasa. That's how mananam should take place. We have to keep on chewing on the uh, vision of the Shastra, vision of the Shruti for it to get absorbed. So that is manana. And after that, one got to also be in the initial discipline of Nididhyasanam. What is that initial discipline of Nididhyasanam? To sit in a place, Shuchau Deshe, so in a clean place, Ekante Sukhamasyatam. That's what again another pointer Acharya Shankara says. In a secluded place with yourself, you sit and contemplate upon the vision of the Shruti, the vision of the Shastra. Initially, you do that through guided meditations and that guided meditation, that specified Nididhyasanam should lead us to meditativeness. So, whole day, you are essentially in Nididhyasanam because you fully up, can appreciate and appreciate this vision of Vedanta that you are the whole, that you are the nature of fullness itself. That appreciation is having a uh, state of meditativeness all the time. Clarity about one's own true nature. Clarity. And that clarity comes from Sampradaya, from Vedanta Sampradaya. What is that Vedanta Sampradaya? What is that tra grand tradition that we have inherited? In the Bhashya, Acharya Shankara says, what is this unique traditional teaching of Vedanta? What is that? So, uh, what is that unique tradition? Adhyaropa Apavada. This great prakriya that iti sampradaya vido vadanti. Acharya says that. So, this inquiry which is based on Adhyaropa Apavada. We have put so much upon ourselves and then we take in the uh, uh, we take in uh, we undertake the inquiry self-inquiry vedanta vichara 
so that what doesn't belong to us, we give it up, we negate, we give it up, so that you come to understand your own true nature as Purna Atma, as Satchidananda Atma. That's the culmination of this entire pursuit, entire vision. So constantly we must be alert, alert in Viveka that what doesn't belong to me, I should have no reservations in giving it up, in starting to disidentify with it. So only then we come to Sarvatma Bhava, holding on to just few things and then uh, trying to have a Sarvatma Bhava will never come. They will never come. That's why constantly what doesn't belong to you should be with alertness, with viveka. It should be uh, given up. That's where is the vairagya. So that we can truly appreciate uh, your own true nature. Which is not the body. Which is not just the mind. Which is not just the bundle of emotions. Which is not just the intellect. There is a deeper aspect to you. That is what is the vision of Vedanta. That what is that deepest aspect of you is that you are. You are. And that you are is self-evident. I am. I am here. I know it. You don't have to ask anybody, am I here or not? You know the sense of I is very, very basic, very, very fundamental. Aham, ahamasmi, sada bhami. I know that I am, I know that I exist and I am aware of that fact. And I am aware of my existence. Sat and chit. But the problem is that sat and chit the, is not really appreciated as it is, we start identifying with limited body, mind, sense, complex and the world and we become that become that sat chit, it doesn't become ananda, it becomes sat chit dukhi. <laughs> sat chit dukhi, dukha. So we got to uh, do this atma vichara. So what doesn't belong to us, when you free yourself from all the sense of limitations of ahankara and mamakara, what you arrive at is your own true nature, is ananda. So that's why even in Taitriya Upanishad, the, uh, the inquiry is undertaken, inquiry is done, inquiry is done, the inquiry suddenly stops at where? Anando Brahme Divyajanat. So once you have understood that your true nature is limitless. You have the culmination of this pursuit, that you have fully imbibed this vision of Vedanta. You know that you are, you know that you are free, you also know that you are never bound. You also know that you are never bound. So somebody asked Pooja Swamiji, so Swamiji, how long should I do Shravana Manana Nididhyasana. How long should I undertake this self-inquiry? So Pooja Swamiji answered, he said, suppose you are on a medication. <laughs> Medi not meditation, medication. <laughs> suppose you are on meditation. How long will, uh, medication, how long will you take the medication? Until the disease is cured. So how do you know that disease is cured? So you know, I mean, uh, uh, in, a, uh, in a worldly sense, through the MRIs and CTs and scans. But uh, whatever they may, those reports may say, finally you also know that whether I am cured or not. Because you don't have no pain, you have no discomfort, you don't have uh, uh, any experience of any of such things. So similar is this moksha. Don't make it some concept and then put it very far from you. Similar is this understanding of the vision of Vedanta. You know that you are cured. How do you know that you are cured? There is no more dukkha. There is no more jealousy. There is no more anger. There is no more bitterness. There is no hurt. There is no guilt. 
So Taitri Upanishad says, when is the culmination? When there is no hurt and guilt. When there is no hurt and guilt. When there is no dukkha, you have arrived. That is moksha. No, no, Swamiji, it seems very simplistic. Yes, it is simple. <laughs> it is simple. And it is very profound. Bhartra Hari, a great Vedantin, a great Vairagi, he laments, Sahajam na rochate kathinam na pachyati. Alas, human predicament, human, pers- uh, human being lives life like this, where nothing simple appeals to me anymore. Simple dishes <laughs> don't appeal to me, but I do not have ability to digest complex things. <laughs> Vedantic vision is simple. It's not simplistic. It is simple. It is profound. That's the vision of Vedanta. And that vision is simple. What is that vision? You are Purnaha. Your true nature is completeness. And if you start this Ahankara and Mamakara and then look and relate to uh, relate with the world, look at yourself and the world, what you will find is Apurnata in yourself, Apurnata in the world. So that's why you keep on uh, finding fault with every family member, every friend. It is not Bhavasuke Doshonu Sandhiyatam. You don't do that. You only find Doshas in people. Everybody is not uh, according to the standards that I have in my mind. Think, dosha. This is, that person is not fine. This person is not fine. This, he is not good. She is not good. This, uh, this is not, that Swami is not good. This Swami is not good. This, that, that's what happens. Why? Because Apurnata inside, you only superimpose Apurnata in the outer world. You do that. You keep doing that. See, I will end my talk giving you this one a very compl- contemplative exercise to know whether what is the real cause of my disturbance. What is the cause of my disturbance? I say it is the world, my wife, my, <laughs> my husband, my kids, society, family, uh, government, pharma, this, that. We will keep blaming everybody. But I'll tell you. What is the real reason of your disturbance? Give up all the gadgets. Go to your room. Sit on your study table. Okay? Just sit there. Close the room. Do not have laptop, anything. And just be there. First first two minutes, you'll be sitting. Second minute, you'll start doing this. Fourth minute, Suddenly, you feel like scratching somewhere. <laughs> Fifth minute, you, you came to the room ha- having dr- uh, taken a cup of coffee, tea, water, everything. Now you feel thirsty suddenly. Tenth minute, you are irritated. There's boredom. You get disturbed. You want to come out of the room. You want to do something. You want something. Now you'll think, okay, I will do Japa or I will listen to Vedanta. Something you'll think about. What does this indicate? You can never face yourself. You get disturbed by yourself. There is no requirement of other person to get disturbed. You get disturbed by yourself. Are, when you cannot deal with yourself, why are you thinking that everybody should be pleasant to you and should deal with you? You yourself cannot deal with yourself. And you are expecting the whole world, family, spouse, everybody to deal with you. What, how, what a ridiculous expectation. So, we, when we do this exercise, we know where we stand. Introspection must be uh, ongoing another Vedantic practice. Without that, we will have accumulated knowledge, a lot of information. There will be no transformation. When that transformation from limited to understanding that I am limitless, if it has to happen, it has to be in this direction. Uh, That is the vision of the Vedanta. And if you want to fully imbibe that, this is how the way to go about it. With that, I conclude my talk. Om Purnamadaf Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadagya Purnameva Vashishyate 
ओम शांत शांत शांति हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम